it's time to talk about heuristics. Let's talk about heuristics. That's what you guys are trying to get at. There's a technical name for it. It's called a heuristic, and that's what we're going to cover today. So remember, we're doing state space search invented by Newell and Simon, uh, awesome folks. We've covered the basics. We have depth first search that has awesome space complexity, but it's totally inadmissible and it's not complete if you guess the wrong bound and don't magically happen to know what the optimal depth is ahead of time because you say haven't solved the problem yet. Um, so that's nice and these are not. Then there's breadth first search, which is pretty pointless, so you better just do uniform cost. Um, uniform cost is really nice in these columns, but it's really scary in this column. So then we have iterative deepening, which gets you these plus this. But I haven't really told you how to do it in domains that aren't uniform costs unless you take the other class. So it's still not totally satisfying. Plus, it's actually kind of stupid, um, iterative deepening, what it does. Um, it doesn't have this like preference for certain moves. It's not trying to be smart. Um, if you look at these algorithms, you would be really justified in saying, you know, where's the AI in this, right? This is like uniform cost search. Give me a break. I mean, AI, I signed up for, the, where's the I part, right? This is very artificial, I agree, but where's the intelligence? Um, so this is not the end of the story. There are more to search algorithms what we've done so far. Um, it's not the end all and be all. Uh, does anyone know who this is? It's a Russian guy, see the little flag here? This is Gary Kasparov getting crushed by Deep Blue. Well, he, won. he did win some games, but not enough. <laughs> Um, so um, there's a lot more to making a system like this than what we've covered so far. And that goes under the name of heuristic search. And the thing to notice is I, I said uniform cost search was just like Dijkstra's shortest path algorithms, Dijkstra's single source shortest path algorithm. If you took the, the algorithms class or you know anything about algorithms. Um, here's what uniform cost search does. If you're trying to travel from the green dot to the red dot, and let's say there might be some obstacles here that we just I haven't drawn because I'm lazy. Um, uniform cost search, or Dijkstra's algorithm, it starts at the initial state and it's going to spread out. Right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to take the, the, the node on the frontier that's closest to the root or has the cheapest path to the root and expand it. Cheapest one and expand it. So it's, it's slowly growing the search frontier out until it reaches the goal state. So in a, in a problem like this, Dijkstra is going to expand all those nodes. Like, where's the intelligence? Right? This is not particularly like, ooh, the intelligence is I didn't expand this little teeny strip over on the far right that was past the goal. <sighs> okay, so we're going to do something better. The technical, if you want to get a little precise and computer science-y about it, you can say that Dijkstra expands every node whose G value is less than the cost of the optimal solution. I'm using a new letter here, F. I know you've probably seen it before, but maybe not in this context. Um, F, sort of like total cost. And star means optimal, like shiny, bright, optimal. So this is optimal cost of the, of the solution, optimal solution cost, F star, shiny. So this is totally unreasonable, so we're going to get serious now. Um, so uh, we're going to use this word heuristic. It comes from this guy Archimedes who was such a scientist that he was thinking, I mean, great scientists do this. They, they're thinking about their problems all the time. You know, they're going to the grocery store, they're thinking about the problems, or, you know, the agora what in his time, right? The, the, they're just thinking about his problem. He's, he's you know, late for work, he's thinking about his problem. He's taking a bath. He's thinking about his problem. He's thinking about, about the principle of buoyancy. And he gets in his bathtub and the water level rises. And he's like, ah, oh, holy crap, I finally figured it out. He's so excited, he shouts, I found it, which apparently in ancient Greek is Eureka. And he runs down the street, Stark naked, because he just got, you know, he's in his bathtub. He runs down the street naked shouting, Eureka, I have found it. Because he'd been trying to, he'd been working on what's the principle of buoyancy, like for months. He hadn't figured out. Um, and so he's done a bunch of things, Archimedes, a really neat guy. Um, so 
Uh, I have found it. This phrase is, is the, the root of heuristic. Heuristic is used in, in modern times in a bunch of different ways, and you have to keep them all straight. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what they are and pay some attention here. So, um, heuristic knowledge is something that's useful but not necessarily correct. So that's the most common definition. Like when you talk to your parents and you, they say, oh, you know, I have this great heuristic um, for driving to work. If the light is red, I always take the left turn and the long way around because the light takes too long. But when the light is green, I always go straight ahead. That's what I do when I come to the intersection of Main Street and 108. If the light is red, I take uh, Oyster, Oyster River Drive, uh, Mill Pond Drive. Um, so that's a heuristic. It doesn't guarantee that I'm taking the shortest path to work. Isn't that a little sick that I work on shortest path problems while I'm driving? But I'm trying to be like Archimedes. Um, so it doesn't guarantee that I found the shortest path, but it's generally true. It's, it's heuristic. Right? Now, in AI, heuristic has a couple of other meanings. A heuristic algorithm is one that uses heuristic knowledge to solve a problem. So it's, it, oftentimes heuristic algorithms are not necessarily correct. Like if you've heard of uh, the nearest neighbor algorithm for the traveling salesman problem. You guys know what the traveling salesman problem is? Classic problem? Yeah, some people, Joe, what is it? Oh, your mouth is full. Dude. <laughs> oh. Exactly. So you have a bunch of cities, um, and you're trying to get to them all. And there's a heuristic for the traveling system problem called the nearest neighbor heuristic, which says that if I'm here, the next city I should go to is the one that's closest to me. Like, don't go from here to here. Bad. I was like, that's not going to result in the shortest tour of all the cities. Go to the closest one. And when I'm there, then go to the closest one. And when I'm there, go to the closest one. And when I'm there, go to the closest unvisited city. And then go to the closest, and then go back to where you started. And that's not guaranteed to always lead to the optimal tour, but it often leads to a pretty good one. So it's a heuristic algorithm. Not guaranteed to be perfect. Not guaranteed to be optimal. We're better than that, right? In our class, we're going to use a heuristic, and we're still going to maintain optimality. Okay, so when you go and say to someone, "Oh, I'm taking the AI class over UNH, and we're studying heuristic algorithms," and someone, goes, "Oh, yeah, algorithms that are wrong. I know about those. What a piece of crap. Why are you guys studying that?" You say, "No, no, 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 no. We use a heuristic, and we're going to be guaranteeing optimality because for us, a, we're going to talk about heuristic functions, not a heuristic algorithm, a heuristic function." And a heuristic function in AI is a very particular thing. It takes a state and returns an estimate of the, this should say cost. I can't believe I made this mistake on my own slide, Matt. Um, cost, estimate of the cost to go from that state to a goal. All right, a lower bound, it's actually, it's actually technically speaking a lower bound on the cost to a goal. Anyone know what a lower bound is? Lower bound, yeah, Adam. Yeah, it's guaranteed to be the, the correct cost to a goal or lower. It's guaranteed not to be overestimating. So it's optimistic. It's like, oh, the, you're going to have to take only five more steps to the goal. You know, in the vacuum world problem where cost is steps. Um, it's a really old concept. People came up with this stuff in the 60s. Um, still very valuable. Now, um, so why heuristic functions? Why is that so necessary? Well, um, why it's necessary is, um, oh well. Mm, okay. Why it's necessary? Let me just, I'm going to do this slowly slides out of order for a sec. Uh, where is this? Uh, whoops. Hello. Oh. Does this not page forward unless I'm in slideshow mode? Oh, what a piece of crap. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. We'll do it in the same order there in the slides right here. 
So uh, what are some things we can do with a heuristic function? A heuristic function is, is we can, now we can have a state and get an estimate of the cost to a goal. So if we have two states, we can see which one is closer to a goal. Which one we're going to get to a goal faster? <laughs> I don't like your computer, Matt. <laughs> I, asked my, I asked my boss if I can have a new computer, and he said yes. So, but I haven't ordered it yet. But it will come eventually. But in the meantime, we're going to put up. I, I love Apple in general, but this particular computer is not my favorite. Uh, is there something I can do to make it not be mean to me? I might hit play. Okay, I won't hit play. So one thing we can do is this thing called greedy search, uh, which is a best first search, a best first search. It keeps some queue of all of the search frontier, and it's ordering the queue by something. But instead of ordering by G, we know a new letter now. We know H. Um, so we're going to sort the queue by the heuristic value. So the nodes that look like they're going to get to the solution the fastest come to the front, and they're the ones we're most likely to pop off. Um, so let's do, let's do an example of greedy search with a heuristic. Uh, take out a piece of paper. If you don't have a piece of paper, you can use the slides, like I give you pieces of paper. Did everyone get a copy of today's slides? You didn't. Matt, did you get a copy of today's slides? Can you give Tyler a copy? Um, so this is a problem called the sliding tile puzzle. Um, and uh, it's just a silly s little example. Um, in the classic eight puzzle, you're trying to get the board in this configuration. And uh, I have a sliding tile puzzle in my office, but my office is currently being reconstructed after it was destroyed a couple weeks ago. Um, and so I, I didn't, couldn't bring it in. But there are these little tiles that you slide around with your fingers. And you can slide tiles into this blank spot. And now this spot becomes blank. And then you can slide that into the blank, and then this. And you make these little moves. And the question is, given whatever starting configuration the, the board is in, how is the fastest way of getting it? What's, what's a, a plan, a sequence of actions, that gets it to the goal configuration? So we're going to solve this using heuristic search. So what's our heuristic going to be? We're going to need an estimate, a lower bound on the cost to go, an estimate, a, an optimistic estimate of the number of of moves we're going to need to make to get uh, this board into that board. Um, and we're going to use a really simple heuristic function. Some heuristics are complicated and fancy and troublesome to compute, and others are very simple. The number of tiles out of place. Why is this an, a guaranteed lower bound on the cost of solving this problem? Kendall, you have a have a, an explanation? Why? Why is that? Oh, and here we are with yet another use for a word you already know, admissible. An admissible heuristic is one that's guaranteed not to overestimate. It's guaranteed optimistic. So why is this a guaranteed optimistic estimate of the number of moves we got to make to get to the goal? Yeah, because those tiles are all out of place. Each move moves at once one tile. Therefore, each of those is going to have to move at least one. So we might have to do more moves, but we'll at least have to move these folks into their correct place. Um, can anyone think of a better heuristic function? Yeah, so, so Kendall's argument was that this is admissible because you're going to have to at least move each of these tiles into place, and each move moves at most one tile. Um, but what we, what if you go a step further and say, well, each move moves each tile at most one space. So each tile is at least going to have to follow the shortest path to where it needs to go. If we were allowed to slide tiles over each other, we would move the eight over here, and the six there, and the two there. And they're each tile's at least going to have to travel the distance to where it goes. Now, because tiles get in each other's way, and it's a real mess, we might have to move, do extra moves to, to ex extricate things. We might have to do more than that, but we're at least going to have to move each tile that far. 
That heuristic is called the Manhattan distance heuristic because it's the Manhattan distance of uh, from where a tile is to where it needs to go. So Manhattan distance is an, a, even a stronger lower bound. It's, it's higher, therefore it's a better, more accurate lower bound. Um, but this is good enough for now. So 